Hi everyone. So today we will be starting with FIRES API. So before moving forward, this is the website that you need to visit. That is myapi.fires.in slash docs. So this is their version two. So they had a previous version. They have the, they have updated their version and we will be using version two. So here you can see API docs version two. This is, this is what we will be using right now. So first we will go to the dashboard. So this is their dashboard. Okay. So how it looks like, I'll show you. So if I go to their home page, so this is how the home page looks like. Okay. So this is where you have to click on the dashboard and this is the dashboard. Now here we have to create a new app. Okay. Now, once you create a new app, a new credential will be given for that app. Okay. So I'll show you how to do it. So you have to go to create an app. So here you have to write a name. Now this name can be anything. Okay. So whatever you want, you can keep it. So I'll write, I'll go trading. So this is the first step. Then you have to write a redirect URL. Now this URL can also be anything. Okay. So I will take google.com. So you can take any other website. That's totally fine. It's not going to change anything. So I'll just copy this and I'll paste this. Now, what is this redirect URL? So once you verify yourself, whenever you are starting your algo, so this website is going to give you authentication token. Okay. So now this authentication token will be sent on this website that is google.com. So in few minutes, we will see how we can get that auth code from this Google website itself. So once you do this, then description is uh, optional. And then this is also optional. Uh, just make sure that you have ticked all of them. That is profile detail, transaction info and everything. I'll just click on, I accept the API usage and click on this button. Great. So we have finally created a new app. Now, once I click on this new app, so this is where I have to click, then I can see all the credentials. So this is my API ID. Then I have my secret ID and this is my redirect URL. So these are the three things that I need to note down. So I'll go to my VS code and let's make a file called as credential dot py. Now in this file, I will be storing everything. So first is my client ID. Okay. So I'll write client underscore ID in this. I'll just copy this and I'll paste it here in a string. The second is secret ID. So I'll write secret underscore ID is equal to this. So I've got both the client ID and secret uh, ID. Then I will just copy this redirect URL to, I'll just name it URL equal to, it's also a string. So these are the three things that you will be getting once you make an app. Okay. So let me make a new file. Fires one dot py. So in this file, uh, I'll write the code uh, for the automation part. And let me make a new file. That is fires one dot IP Y and B. So first I'll uh, show you how the same thing is done in a Jupyter file. Once I've completed the Jupyter file, then I'll show you how to do the same thing in a dot py file. So let's go to the documentation. So I'll go here. I'll scroll down. So they have this one important image. Okay. So this is how it works. Okay. So don't worry if you're not understanding it in the first go, because once we do it, then you'll get an idea like what exactly uh, is happening here. So you can see that there are two sections. One is this and one is this. Okay. So in the first section, you have to send your client ID and client URI. So this is going to give you auth code. Once you've got the auth code, then you have to send the auth code and you're going to receive the access token. Okay. So these are all the steps that you have to do before proceeding ahead with uh, doing actual trades. All right. So I'll just scroll down. So this is the first thing. So I'll click on Python and okay. So I'll click on Python here also. So this is the beginner code that we will be needing. So I'll just copy this and I'll go here and I'll paste this. Now the first is installation. Okay. So before moving forward, you have to install the version two app. So how to do it? So you just have to copy this. So I'll just copy this and I'll paste it here. And in the beginning, I'll just write exclamation. So this means it is going to install this Python uh, fires dash API version to library. So I've already installed it, you know, so it won't show much in my case, but let's see what it shows. So this is the first step that is you have to install the library. Once you've installed the library, you will be needing to import these two uh, things from that library. One is fires model and one is access token. Okay, so these are the two things you have to import. So from where did I get to know this? I just copied and pasted the code from their official documentation. Now, once you've got this, okay, now you see here, it is already installed, so I don't really need to install it again. So I'll just delete this. 
Now let's move forward. And you see, this is the beginner code that they have given. So in this code, what they are doing in the fires in the access token uh, class, they have this, you know, some method called a session model. And in the session model, you have to pass few argument. Okay, so let's do the same thing. So if you want to, you know, make an object of session, you need few things. What are those things? One is client ID. You need secret key. You need redirect URL. And few more things are there, okay, which are optional. So I'll do one thing. I'll go to my file and I'll copy all the three things. Okay, so let's add another piece of code and I'll paste it here. Okay, so these are the three things uh, that I need. Okay, and I'll do one thing. I'll just okay, cut this everything. I'll run this first. That is importing the library. Then I I will run this, which in which I have all the three credentials. Now here I'll finally paste it again, and I'll keep only this much response. Okay, so let's change the thing. So first is client ID. So here I need the client ID. So I'll just copy this. I'll just paste it here. The second is secret key. Okay, so I'll do one thing. I'll just change here only secret key. And the third is URL. Okay, so I'll do one thing. I'll change this also. I'll change this to redirect URI. Okay, so once I do this, I've got all the three things. One is client ID, secret key, and redirect URI. Now there are three more things. Okay, one is response type. Then I have grant type. Then there is state, scope, and nonce. So let's try to understand what are these things. So if you scroll down, you'll see that for response type, you have to keep it as code. Okay, so they are telling us that we need to keep a uh, code as an argument. So we'll do the same thing. I'll come here and I'll just change this to code. Just remove this unwanted code. So this is done. Response type is done. Uh, then we have grant type. So where is the grant type? So this is a grant type and for grant type, you have to pass the default argument that that is authorization code. So I'll just copy this and I'll just paste it here. Paste it and add it here. So this is a next thing that I have to do. Okay. One is code and one is authorization code. So this I came to know by referring to the documentation. Then I just remove all the thing because they are not mandatory. So you can leave it blank. This is all you have to do. And then you'll finally have to create the response. Okay, I just call this generate auth token uh, function from that session uh, class. And then finally, I'm storing it in a response variable. And let's see what this response is. So I'll just write response here. Okay, now the moment I run the code, you'll see I'm going to get one link. So this is our auth code. So if you remember from that diagram, so we have already completed this step. That is, we have sent the client ID and URI, and it has gave us, it has given us auth code. Okay, so this is us done till now. Now we will move to the next step. That is, we need what? We need access token. All right. So before moving to the access token, you have to copy this link. Okay. So we need to verify ourselves that we are the one who is demanding for the access token. So I'll just copy this and I'll just paste it here. Now I'll show you what will happen when I paste it here. So if I paste it here, okay, it is going to show me something like this. Okay. Now this is, this will be shown whenever you do it for the first time. Okay, now if you are trying to do the same thing for the second or third time, this won't be visible. Okay, something else will come. Now, if I do the same thing in another tab, okay, so I'll just open it in a private window and I'll just paste it here. So in this case, you see it is asking me for client ID. Okay, now why it is asking me client ID here? Because see, on this browser, it is already verified. I already have logged in into my account. So it's all automatically detecting that, you know, it's me only. But in this case, it is not logged in. So it is asking me to verify myself. Now, once I verify myself, then it is going to give me uh, the authentication code. All right. So let me first verify myself here. Then I'll do the same thing again for the next time. So I'll just click on I accept and I'll click on continue. Now, once I click on this button, it will redirect me to google.com. This is what we were expecting, right? So it is going to go to google.com. Now, what changed here? Now, if you look at the URL, URL is different. So I'll just copy it and I'll just show you by adding it in a new cell. I'll paste it here. Now, if you notice this URL, there are a few things. First is the google.com. Then I have this S equal to OK, then code equal to 200, 200, and then auth code equal to something is there. So what I'll do, I'll just remove everything before auth code. And at the end also, I'll remove the unnecessary thing that is this and state equal to none. So these two things you have to remove. Okay, and I'll add a quote here. 
and in the beginning also i'll just add a quote here and what i got i got this auth code this is not auth code okay this is what this is access token okay so no sorry this is auth code all right so i've got the auth code uh, from that website now this is what we will be needing to get the authentication token all right so i'll just run this code i'll go to the next cell now once you have got the auth code what else you have to do so let's go to the documentation i'll just scroll down now this is the next code that they have given us so i'll just copy it and i'll just paste it in the new cell paste it here here you the first thing is auth code so we already have it so i'll remove it then you need this session dot set token so we have already made the session uh, object so we don't need to do it again so i'll keep it like this and then i will be uh, calling this function that is generate token and then from that generate token i will be getting this access token okay so let's do one thing let's remove everything else for now and let's see what exactly this response is right now okay so i'll just comment it out and at the end i'll write response okay now let's see what is the response so if you see this is what the response is okay it's just saying error your auth code has expired please generate a new auth code so, so for some reason it has expired so we need to do it again okay so how to do it again so these two things will still remain same i'm going to run this piece of code so i'll just run this it is it has given me again some uh, link so i'll just copy this link i'll just go on this website and i'll just paste it here so it has redirected me to google.com now why it is not asking me for the client id and all because in this browser i've already logged it so i don't really need to do my verification again it's already verified so i'll copy this again i'll come here i'll just paste it here i'll remove the unnecessary thing so i'll add a quote here and in the beginning also i have to add a quote so here also i'll add a quote the auth code auth code equal to it's a string okay this is what the auth code is so i'll just run the code i've got the auth code now i'll again try to generate the response now if you see in this response what is this response the response is a dictionary and in this dictionary i have this s then code then message then access token okay now in this response we have finally got the access token so let's try to access it so i'll just copy this piece of code that i have commented out i'll just paste it here and uncomment it so i will store this access token in a variable that is access token so this is what we need okay before moving forward we will be needing this access token and we have finally found it okay now few things you have to remember that is this access token will be valid for an entire day now in the next day if you try to use the same access token it will not work you have to follow the same process again okay this is one thing and second thing this auth token is unique every time so suppose if i run this code again okay so i will be getting a new access token okay i cannot use the same auth code again okay every time i run the code a new auth code will be generated once you get an auth code then again a new access token will be given to you and that access token will be valid for an entire day okay so now let me show you something else now so i'll run it again okay i'll again try to you know get the access token but now what if i run this code again okay if i run this code again you see now it is showing an error why because i told you that once you have generated an auth code it can be used once to get the access token but now you're trying to use it again okay you're using the same auth code to get a new access token which is not possible all right so if you want the access token again what you need to do you need to verify yourself again for that you need to again get the auth code so what i'll do i'll just run this again it will get me a link okay this link is almost same so i'll just copy it now this time instead of opening it in this browser in which i have already logged in i'll open it in a new browser in an incognito tab so i'll remove everything and i'll paste it here now the moment i open it in this website first thing it is going to ask me is to add my client id okay so let me my add my client id here so i'll just stop it for a second okay so this is where i have to add my client id so i'll just add it i'll just paste it so this is my client id now here i have to add the six digit totp okay so i already have it in my mobile phone so i'll just go through it and i'll type it
So this will be unique after every few seconds. Now, finally, I have to add my four digit pin. So I'll just pause it and add it. Okay. Now, once I have typed my four digit key, this is what it showed me. Okay, it showed me google.com. Now in this website, again, I've got some auth code in the URL. So I'll just copy this auth code here. I'll go to my Python code again, and I'll paste it here one more time. Again, I have to do the same thing. I have to remove the unnecessary thing. That is this and state from the last. And from the beginning, I have to remove this code equal to 200 and everything. And I'll add the entire thing in a string. So here I have the auth code again. Now again, I have to do the same thing. I'll run this code. I'll get a response 200, which means I've finally got the access token. And then finally I'm storing it in a variable that is access token. So these are all the steps that you need to do before moving forward. Okay. Before doing any type of trade. All right. Now, once you have made, you have got the access token. Now we can finally make an object of type files. Now, how do you do that? So I'll go to the documentation one more time. So if I scroll down, so this is what we need. We need to make an object. So I'll just copy this code from here and I'll paste it here. Now what is happening here? So in fires model, we are calling this fires model uh, class. And in that we are sending few argument. First is client ID. Second is token. What is this client ID? This is what we got. We have saved it in this line. Okay. So we need this client ID. So I'll just copy this client ID from here and I'll just paste it here. This is the first thing. The second is access token. So I've already saved it in this variable access token. So I'll just copy this and I'll paste it here. The last is log path. Now, what is this log path? In this, you have to send what is the current working directory in which path you are trying to run the code. So for that, I need another uh, library that is OS. So I'll write import OS. And in OS, there is a function called as get CWD. So I'll use that function. So here I'll write OS dot get CWD function. So this is going to be replaced with the current working directory. So I'm finally done. So I'll just run the code. And in the next line, I'll show you what this fires is. Now this fires is a object of fires class. Okay. And this is what we need to do any type of trade. So I'll again go to documentation and let's try to run one code. Like let's use our first method here. So if I go here, there is this profile information. Okay. So if I run this code, that is fires dot get profile is going to give me my profile information. Okay, so let's try to run it and see what I'm, I'll get. So I'll just run the code and you see it is giving me all of my details. Like what is my name? What is my email ID? You know, everything it is giving me. Okay, so now we know that we have finally done everything. Now, if you want to do any type of trade or you want to get historical data, everything can be done now. But before moving forward, let's try to understand how I can automate this entire thing. Okay, because now what are the things I'm doing? First, I've got... I'm importing library. Then I'm adding all the credentials that I got from the app. Then I'm getting the auth code. Okay. How do I get the auth code? Uh, I just go to this link, which is generated by the generate auth code function. Once I click on this link, I verify my, myself. After verifying myself, I go to another website that is google.com. From that website, I'm copying the URL. I'm taking the URL from that URL. I'm saving the auth code in a variable. And then finally, I'm making the fires object. Okay. After making the fires object, then I can do whatever I want. So these are all the things I have to do before moving to uh, doing something else. Now, if you make your own algo, okay, if you want to deploy it somewhere, you have to do this. Okay? You cannot skip this. So what we will do, we will use a Selenium library to automate this entire thing. So we will write a piece of code, which will automatically do everything for us. Okay. So let's try to understand how that can be done. 